consideration here that I learned about from Diana Fleischmann's paper, Uncanny Vulvas, which is much more interesting not when a, it comes to paper titles. Not, not a reference I'm, uh, that has crossed my desk at the Brookings Institution, but you're right. It's a better you're not reading better the title. right things, Richard. You're not reading the right things. And she makes a hypothesis that men who utilize porn and are not going out to seek partners are getting simulacrum fitness cues that they are being successful from using porn. And mm. you could roll that uh, thought process forward for, well, what are computer games? Mm. What's, a, what's a computer game? Well, that's progress over time. That's conscientiousness. It's a band of brothers. You've got community. You've got belonging. You've got a sense of all of this stuff. Okay, so if you are able to provide proxy fitness cues that manage to keep men going, and you can basically sedate them out of being the roving band of miscreants causing yep. trouble and pushing over granny that we were concerned about originally. But now you've got something which is l less tumultuous, but even more sort of nihilistic, mm -hmm. which is this yeah. group of sedated, checked out men the checked out thing yeah yeah the checked out rather than acting out yeah i mean i i think that if we pursue this thought a bit further um the argument very often is made that the internet and um, particularly video games uh the technology in the form of video games especially and pornography um uh have been you know this is horrible thing right and you know i know jonathan Haidt very well and work with him and i think there are a lot of there are a lot, a lot of issues there but you could flip it on its head and say, given what we've seen about the declining marginal utility of males, actually, those things came along just in time to save us. And that even if it's not optimal, and we can get into some of the claims that you've just made, some of which I, I'm more skeptical about than you are, I think, um, it's certainly better than the alternative. Right? That's very uh, interesting. It's, so so were we, were we, are we actually being saved by games and porn? Now, we're so focused on the problems that there might be with those that we're like, well, what's the counterfactual? Imagine, imagine that we'd had none of those technological changes at all, right? There were no video games for men to play. There was no porn for men to look at. And they were increasingly out of work, and dislocated, etc. Uh, maybe some of the things that conservatives warned about would have been a bit more true. Maybe we wouldn't have seen this incredible decline in crime that has accompanied. No, no one, again, nobody predicted that the falling employment of prime age men and the growing detachment of men from their families, etc., would be accompanied by a historic decline in crime. No one predicted that. Everybody would have predicted the opposite of that. And so I think that's important. So why? And maybe you've got this, this escape valve in a way. Now, how bad are those problems? I, I'm not convinced that they're that bad actually i looked at the video gaming evidence and i just like uh, i don't i don't think there's much going on there i looked at the evidence on porn i was going to have a whole chapter on sex it's still there but i cut it out because there's only so many things you can you know and a, fr a friend of mine said look if you have a chapter on sex you, you'll never get people to talk about education or labor market and that's probably good advice um but I do think that some you've you've mentioned some you know, people like Louise and there's Christine Ember and so on too that I think are talking interestingly about sex. I'm not convinced for hugely negative effects from porn either, to the extent except for the a minority who are highly addicted. That is a problem as it is for alcohol or anything else. I think the issue with things like games and porn, you've hinted at this, is is less what boys and men are doing when they're doing those things. It's more what they're not doing. It's the displacement of other activities that's the problem, not the activity itself. And it could be that it displaces, say, going out, right? So I'm old enough to know that if you wanted to, you know, to get any kind of action at all with a girl, you had to go through various, various phases. You had to shower. You had to dress properly. You had to go out. You had to be, you had to risk multiple rejections until perhaps finally Something happened that broke in your favor. It was humiliating. It was exhausting. And you had to do it every Friday and Saturday night from the age of 15 to whatever it was. Okay, so that's not the world that my boys grew up in because there's porn and there's games and there's weed. And 
I'm not, I'm not even necessarily sure that my world was better, but I do know that it was riskier. And I do know that you had to put yourself out there a lot more. And I do know that you had to make much more of an effort. Um, and so I worry a little bit about the ease with which you can opt out of some of those difficult things like mate, like, like, a, like a mature mating strategy. And that might be de-skilling some young men in ways that are quite important. But I, think, I honestly think it's a bit too early to tell. And I'm, again, a bit worried about the stereotyping here, the stereotype well, guys just lie around smoking weed and, you know, looking at porn and, you know, playing video games. 